Is Miles, are you on? <clears throat> I, I am on now. I was having some trouble connecting my audio, but I'm here. Oh, good. Did, now, did um, speakers sign up in advance? We had uh, three speakers sign up in advance, and I believe we just had someone else submit comments okay. uh, to be read. Okay. Thank you. Smile. <laughs> Get yourself into the screen. Todd's giving me motion sickness. <laughs> John, you need a haircut. That's for my quarantine hair. At least I shaved, Howard. Huh? That's the last time you did that. What's that? I said, at least I shaved. I haven't shaved in 30 years, Jonathan. That's how long my mother's been going. Hmm. You ladies don't have to worry about haircuts. You just need to worry about your color. A lot of men worry about the color, too. Oh, that's probably true. <laughs> My ladies with blonde were very upset that they couldn't go for a while. Well, the nice thing about going gray is it sort of blends in, so. <laughs> Are we ready to go, Scott? I think the actual hearing is at five, isn't it? I think there's a meeting at 445 and a hearing at five is what the agenda said. Miles, Scott was knocked out. He, it's not letting him get back in with his phone. So can you please let him get back in? Um, sure, I can see what I can do to get him back up here. Thank you. That's why he hasn't started. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, who's got the critters in the background? That would be me, sorry. <laughs> How you doing, Kathy? I'm good. How are you, Nance? Good, good, good. Loving the dream. Night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I hope they work this out. I had trouble. I had trouble. In. Oh, you did? We have lead Scott. And I logged in on my phone too. too. Yeah, it, it asked yeah, me it asked temporary. 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 You can be the chair, Wolf. Well. I can't replace our Scott. I can do the pl Pledge of Allegiance. Nance, why don't you do the pledge and get us started at least? Pete, is that okay with you? Works for me. <laughs> right. Let's let's get it started with the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, our, uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of which I stand, one nation under God, in the and with liberty and justice for all. There's a flag behind me. And then, should we see who's in the house? John Burks, are you here? I'm here. Mark, are you here? I'm here. Kathy, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Todd? I'm here. Bob? Bob? He's saw him a minute ago. Uh, yeah, here. And then we've got our commander in chief back on, Scott. Scott. Which one? All right. Well, Scott Phillips, are you there? <laughs> yeah. Which one? Yeah. All right. And Scott Halipka, you there? Yep. Todd Warren. And uh, we miss it. Katie. <laughs> Katie. All right. Can I be heard now? There yeah. you go. Take over. Thank you, Katie. guys. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened on that one. Usually don't have the uh, technical. All right. Have you finished the um, roll call? Roll call. Haven't heard from Katie yet. Paul Hartman. I'm here. And then we have uh, Wayne. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so that's the roll call. 
Okay. So I make sure I'm, I'm, we're good. Who was absent? Katie? Well, Katie seems to be on there, but she can't, she's not responding. So I don't okay. think you can hear. Okay. And then who did somebody take Mr. Mr. Heinel and Mr. Bear, are they on? No. Okay. And Todd was there, but I don't see him now. Okay, and I did see Todd. All right. Thank you, Nancy, for getting us started. And I apologize to everyone for the uh, glitch we had here. When all else fails, I guess I have to go to the phone. <laughs> Katie's on, but she said she doesn't know why we can't hear her. Okay. So I'm going to tell her if she has anything to just ask in chat. That will work. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, you have your agendas before you. Uh, Mr. Mielberger, are there any changes to the tentative agenda? Uh, Mr. Chairman, there are no changes. Okay. Very good. In your July 13th email, you all received a draft minutes of the June 18th, 2020 meeting. Has everyone had an opportunity to review the draft minutes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? <clears throat> if not, the chair will entertain a motion to accept the minutes as circulated. Okay. Motion to accept. Second. Mr. Schweitzer and Ms. Hafford, you've heard the motion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed to have the same right, not hearing any. Motion carried and the minutes are adopted. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is our other business. We'll first have a report from the July 9th, 2020 meeting of the Landmarks Preservation Commission. And if Katie can be heard, uh, Katie will do that. And if not, we'll rely on Mr. Milberg. Katie? Miles, can you um, handle the report of Landmarks Preservation? Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. OK. Thank you, Katie. Go right ahead. OK, great. I don't know why that was not working. I apologize. Let me just pull it up. I do have the notes from Miles. Um, at the July 9th, 2020 meeting of the Landmarks Preservation Commission, the LPC voted to issue seven certificates of appropriateness to the following properties. The Krasiski property located at 93 Duncliffe Road, Rogers Forge, Baltimore County Bank located at 500 York Road, Towson. The Black property located at 718 Cliveton Road, Sudbrook Park. Hereford, Hereford High School Barn located at 17301 York Road in Parkton. The Johnson property located at 600 Sedbrook Road, Sedbrook Park. Hunt Schmidt, Schmidt House and Setting Ham property located at 12656 Manor Road in Parkton. And the Wright Derp property located at 5161 Viaduct Avenue in Relay. The LPC also voted to issue one notice to proceed to the following property. The Kelly property located at 4948 Tulip Avenue in Relay. And that does it. Mr. Chair, you're on mute. Did we lose them again? <coughs> uh oh, not again. I don't see him on. I see him, but I can't hear him. Oh, oh there he is. Maybe we should all just go play golf with Todd. <laughs> oh, welcome. I'm right there in Towson. <laughs> Amen. 
Look at this. This is great. You're lost. We can't hear you. Yeah, I don't know if we can hear Scott, um, but next on the agenda, I believe, is the the legislation, which I can read to you all. Okay. So the first. Okay. Um, legis sorry. I, I'm sorry, but I just got off the phone with Scott and we can't hear him. So if you could read the legislation and we'll call for a vote and then we'll move to the next meeting. Sure. Uh, the recent county council legislation of interest to the board includes bill 55-20 the cares act title three funding emergency measure for the purpose of amending the 2019-2020 current expense budget by appropriating to the gifts and grants special revenue fund monies derived from federal funds made available to the county through the maryland department of aging as a result of the COVID 19 public health catastrophe Bill 56-20, the Coronavirus Relief Fund Emergency Measure for the purpose of amending the 2019-2020 current expense budget by appropriating to the gifts and grants special, rep, special revenue fund monies derived from federal funds and made available to the county through the U.S. Department of Treasury as a result of the COVID-19 public health catastrophe and public emergency. Resolution 60-20, Encourage enactment and signing a fifth coronavirus relief bill, a resolution of the Baltimore County Council encouraging the U.S. Congress and the President of the United States to enact and sign into law a fifth coronavirus relief bill that allocates direct and flexible recovery aid to states and local governments, including counties, to fund essential public employees providing essential services provided by states and local governments. Thank you, Miles. That actually concludes our agenda. Um, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. It's been moved by Mr. Warren. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 This meeting is now adjourned. It is now 5.03 p.m. So we will move directly into the public hearing. Um, that was scheduled for today. So we'll go ahead and begin. Welcome everyone. The public hearing for the Baltimore County Cycle 38 Water and Sewage Master Plan amendments uh, is now called to order. The hearing is to, to consider amendments to the Water and Sewage Plan. My name is Scott Phillips. I'm the chairman of the board. I will go through and do a roll call of the board members present. When you hear your name, please say aye. Mr. Schweitzer? Aye. Ms. Panero? Ms. Mr. Hartman? Aye. Mr. Holopka? Aye. Ms. Hafford? Aye. Ms. Burzins? Ms. Burzins? She wasn't on before. Okay, Ms. Wolfson? Aye. Mr. McGinnis? Aye. Mr. Heckman? Aye. Mr. Heinel? Mr. Herbst? Aye. Mr. Perlow? Uh, Mr. Perlow? I know he's out there. Aye. And Mr. Warren? I did not hear Ms. Panero, but I believe Ms. Panero is present as well, correct? Yes, she is. Okay. Very good. First item on our uh, hearing list this evening is Cycle 38 Water Supply and Sewage Master Plan Amendments. On June the 18th, 2020, Ms. Erin McKenna Stryle from the Department of Public Works presented the Cycle 38 and Sewage Master Plan Amendments. At this time, I will call on those of you who have completed the online registration posted on the board's website to speak on these topics in the order that you register. Those who wish to provide written testimony during the hearing can do so by typing your comments to the host in the chat box and the comments will be read to the board members during the hearing. Please refer to the on-screen instructions for entering comments um, and procedures for speaking during the hearing. 
Please remember to limit your comments to three minutes or less. All right. Now, I know there were a few individuals who signed up. I'm going to ask staff to give me a little assistance. Who was the first person to speak, Miles? And if you could list the first three. Uh, first up, we have Christopher Mudd, followed by David Thaler. And then after that, I believe we only have comments to be read, unless some of the other attendees would like to speak, in which case they could message me now. Thank you, Miles. So I think the first person was Mr. Rudd. Christopher? Can we promote Christopher so he can speak? Uh, Chris Mudd should be a panelist now. I uh, believe he just may need to connect a microphone or possibly call in. We've been doing this relatively successful for the last three months. This Hello. has been our most challenging um, situation here. Okay, very good. Can everybody hear me? We yeah. can now. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Muhlenberger and, and members of the uh, planning board. I'm Chris Mudd. I'm an attorney at Venable. Um, I'm representing, um, along with Mr. Thaler, who's speaking after me, um, the, the owner of the property at 1400 West Seminary Avenue, which is one of the requests in the Master Water and Sewer Plan Amendment. Um, the, our application and materials generally speak for themselves, but I'll give you a brief explanation. Um, the subject property that we're talking about is approximately 47 acres um, zoned DR1 and entirely within the Ertl. I should say that the property um, actually has lands that extend beyond the Ertl, but our, the limits of our request are entirely within the Ertl. Um, it's currently designated as W7S7, and the request is to take it to W3S3, which would be for planned public water and sewer service. Uh, the property has been zoned DR1 and inside the Ertl for 20 years. Um, and it has not been developed for 20 years, but um, a proposal to, to develop this property is underway. Um, and the designation to, to W3S3 is being requested as part of that. Um, it, it is a, a natural uh, 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 designation to provide here, given it that, it that it has the DR1 zoning and is within the URTL. It's immediately adjacent to properties that are served by public water and sewer, both to the east and to the south. Um, and all of the, the reviewing agencies have recommended in favor of the request. The Department of Planning did request that a portion of that 47 acres, uh, which is subject to a conservation easement on the far west side of the property, that that be excluded from the designation. And we have no issues with that. And in fact, it would be excluded from any development um, request that gets filed. Um, so with that, unless there's any questions, I just ask the Planning Board for the support. Um, to recommend in favor of the W3S3, just as all the reviewing agencies have, have done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Thaler should be able to speak now as well. How do I get in? We can hear you, David. He's muted. Dave? Can you hear me? No. Yep. Yep. You can hear me. Oh, uh, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, um, members of the board. My pleasure to be here. David Thaler from DS Thaler uh, and Associates. Uh, I just want to uh, concur in what Mr. Mudd uh, has uh, said. Uh, this is uh, uh, a property that's inside the Ertl, inside the Metropolitan District. It's been zoned uh, DR for at least uh, 20 years. Uh, there's water and sewer uh, adjacent to the property on two sides. Uh, there's a covenant 
uh, that an agreement with the community as to how the property is to proceed. The owner is now uh, proceeding and um, we request uh, the board's uh, approval of uh, S3, uh, W3 uh, that would be appropriate for this property. And we believe, I believe that uh, all the staff comments are supportive. Uh, if there are no comment, uh, questions, Mr. Chairman, uh, that would be all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, could Mr. Thaler tell us who the developer is, please? Because we don't have it here in our notes. Well, it's uh, the, it's out the property. The, the property is owned, Mr. Perlow, by Mr. Krongard, and he's he is uh, requesting. We're we're working for Mr. Krongard. Okay, thank the you. Property owner. Sure. Mr. Chairman, uh, are are there any un and uh, un unresolved uh, environmental issues with the uh, with the property at this point as far as drainage and that sort of thing. May, may I question, answer that? Mr. Mato to Mr. Taylor. Go right ahead. Sh sure. So uh, was that Mr. Schweitzer? Yes, you're right. Uh-huh. Great. Um so yes, sir, the, there I wouldn't say unresolved, but um as we make our way through the development of process, we'll be working hand in hand with uh, both with Mr. Thaler's office and then with the Department of Environmental Protection and Sustainability on stormwater design as well as on provi uh, providing adequate forest conservation and providing uh, buffers for uh, resources that exist on site. Okay, that so it sounds like there's uh, adequate measures to, to be taken then at this point. Yes, sir. And, and actually one thing I should point out too is um, the, the property is about, the development area is about 45 acres, which could yield 45 units. The request would only be for 32 units, which is by, by limitation of the covenant that Mr. Um, Thaler mentioned. So Good. this is actually a, quite a sprawling property that's not any, um, you know, th th there's not a, uh, 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 an intensification of the density on here. It's, it's under density for what the property could provide. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Mr. Chair, one, one question. It, um, and maybe it's to Mr. Mudd. It says on the report here that was up um, that it's both inside and outside the urdle. Um, is the is the report incorrect? No, no, that's correct. So Mr. Krongard owns 90 acres, give or take. Um, and this 40, what will be about 45 acres, um, that's the request of the rezoning, is all within the URL and all within the Metropolitan District and all zone DR. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, Mr. Muehlberger, is there another person who is going to be speaking on this issue? Um, we have no one else registered to speak. I can read the comments from two others that were submitted, um, but if any of the other attendees would like to speak, I would ask if they could either send me a message through the chat or raise their hand and I will unmute them after we read the comments that were submitted. Thank you, Miles. If you could go ahead and read the comments. Sure. Um, the first comments come from Miles Agbaje. Um, he's making the comments in lieu of appearance. The first is that the, this is for 20-02 uh, uh, Liberty Road, 10116. He says the, the Board of Public Works has not said anything definitive in their report. Their report uses the word may, uh, comment two. As a taxpaying citizen of Baltimore County, we are entitled to enjoy services that other similar citizens enjoy, such as provision of public water and sewer. Three, cost alone is no reason to deny the petition. And finally, four, the area has changed significantly over the years and is no longer rural. There are residential developments and businesses in the vicinity that will benefit from provision of public water and sewer. And that is all that uh, Mr. Bajay had sent in for his comments. Okay. And I will follow that with comments submitted by the Green Towson Alliance. 
Um, this is for issue 20-03. So the Green Towson Alliance wishes to comment on the issue 20-03. This is a 91.5 acre parcel that is proposed to change from SW7, no plan service to SW3 capital facilities service area. Under county rules, SW3 means this parcel is eligible for service extensions and change to SW1, existing service, without further amendment of the sewerage master plan or public scrutiny. We believe this rule should be reviewed. Number one, plans for this parcel are not known. We are not aware of what development is proposed for this parcel, but do agree that the portion of the property inside the Ertl is potentially eligible for service. If there's no specific development plan for this parcel at this time, it would seem premature to advance the service status of this parcel, particularly since there would be no further public or planning board review of the water and sewer master plan service area change as noted. Two, the Blue Stem decision. The County Board of Appeals found in recent decision issued on January 3rd, 2020, in the matter of CPC Falls Road, that the entire Jones Falls sewer shed lacks capacity for additional flows. As stated, that increased flow from the proposed blue stem development adds to the already severely overburdened interceptors in the Jones Falls watershed, exacerbating the existing conditions, which in turn enhance the risk of contamination of groundwater, surface water, and recreational facilities, as well as other consequences. Provision of sewer service through the Jones Falls system of any proposed development on the subject parcel will add flows to the overburdened sewers referenced in the Board of Appeals Blue Stem decision. Three, the basic services maps, in addition to the Jones Falls system capacity issues identified in the Blue Stem decision, the county's basic services maps show flow restrictions in parts of the watershed, which would potentially carry flows from this parcel. The basic services map is county policy and adopted by the county policy, uh, council. Four, the Jones Falls sewer shed study. Due to express, expressions community and DPW doubt about adequate conveyance capacity in the Jones Falls system, the county, re, county recently initiated a review of flows and capacities in that system under a contract to update the previous 2012 study. Mm -hmm. More up-to-date information should be learned about the system before increased flows are permitted and added to the new development. Based on the above considerations, we feel it is premature to upgrade the service area category for this parcel. It would seem unwise for the board to do so in effect approving development where system capacity to support that development is in question. Therefore, they recommend that the board defer action on this amendment until the board and public is provided with more information on the development plans and the flows that will be generated the means of serving the parcel and resolution of all downtown sewerage capacity issues, particularly if it will be served through the Jones Falls sewer shed. And thank you for the opportunity to comment. This is a letter from Beth Miller, Raj Gukin, Larry Fogelson of the Green Towson Alliance. Okay. Very good. Were there any uh, further comments in the chat or in the Q&A? Uh, I have no more requests in the chat. I do see that Chris Mudd has a um, uh, marker next to his name. I'm not sure if he is asking to speak again or if he is not. But beyond that, there are no more requests to speak on this public hearing. All right. Mr. Mudd, would you like to speak again? Um, I guess the only thing I would say is, is with regard to some of those comments, um, we we are um, certainly evaluating a lot of those things, and Mr. Mr. Thaler's office is evaluating a lot of those things. We we, we don't agree with um, some of the information that came out of those cases, um, and we are going to be making our way through the development review and approval process with the uh, under the guidance of the Department of Public Works, who's responsible for overseeing all of those issues. Um, and, and they, of course, have an opportunity and did comment um, in the context of this case, of this, of this process, I should say, um, and have no issues with um, making it available for public service. To their point, the designation of W3S3 doesn't guarantee service, but it, but it provides the opportunity for it. And then it'll be our, our, our uh, uh, burden to demonstrate that um, 
that there is adequate capacity and an ability to serve this site. So I don't I don't see how those concerns necessarily um, play into this particular part of the process. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it should be noted that we are not taking a vote on this this evening. And if there is additional information that anyone would like to share on the items that were um, discussed, you can forward that information to the Department of Planning. It will be distributed to board members for their review before our final vote on this issue. I want to thank everyone who uh, joined us to speak this evening. The Planning Board will take into consideration all comments from this evening's public hearing. Um, are there any further questions from board members this evening? Scott, this yeah. is Kathy. And it came up at the last meeting and I would still like to know what the proposed use is for the Liberty Road property. Does the staff have any comments on the proposed use of the Liberty Road property? Uh, Mr. Phillips, this is Erin McKenna from uh, Department of Public Works. We haven't received any other information about the proposed use for the Liberty Road property. I'm sorry, not the Liberty, the, um, yeah, the Liberty Road property. The Liberty Road property. Um, Ms. Wilson has, has made that request for additional information. Perhaps the um, petitioner uh, could be asked to provide some additional detail. Uh, we will take all of that in consideration when we cast our final vote. Um, thank you all. Um, all of the comments from the public will be taken into consideration when the board votes on the recommendation, which is tentatively scheduled for September the 3rd, 2020. If there are no further comments from board members, this public hearing will be adjourned. This is the last opportunity. Any, anyone else? Not. Thank you all very much. And this meeting, or this hearing, is now adjourned.